Hello everyone, uh, Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Hope everybody's uh, doing okay out there today. And uh, today I thought I'd um, take a look at um, a comparison between the speed tests and uh, metrics for a couple of different VPNs. Uh, I did an article uh, recently um, uh, and I also did a video recently on WireGuard. So check that video out on my channel here. It's a WireGuard video. Um, but I hadn't done one on another VPN service that I do have called Proton VPN. Now, these two are totally separate. They're totally different, and uh, I want to compare those two. And that's what this video is going to be about. Uh, I'm out on my Linux, uh, Farron OS Linux system right now, and I'll be conducting the test in the terminal uh, and also out on the web as well for speeds. So we'll take a look at the comparison between the free version of Proton VPN and WireGuard, which is free except for the server that I've set up uh, in Atlanta. And we'll take a look at that right after this. Okay, I'm back and I'm out on the uh, Proton VPN website at uh, protonvpn.com. I'll put a link uh, to this uh, website underneath the video as I will every other link that I present here so that you have those. Uh, Proton VPN is a service that's available to Proton users. I have Proton Mail. Uh, the Proton VPN comes out of Switzerland. Uh, the servers are uh, worldwide, however, there's like uh, if you have the non-free service, it's uh, like in 50 countries, over 800 uh, VPN servers available to you. I've got the free service uh, with my account, even though I have a professional Proton Mail uh, account or subscription. I only have the free Proton VPN. The reason for that is I don't need it. I mean, I'm using WireGuard that I set up. And please check out that video, if you would, uh, on WireGuard, the website link to that. Um, article is here on my blog, Data Pioneers blog. I'll put a link to this under the video as well. Called Setting Up WireGuard VPN on a Linode in Debian 9 Linux. I did that in Atlanta on a virtual server. So check that out if you get a chance. And you can uh, replicate that yourself as well. All right, so getting back to the Proton VPN um, service. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to compare the Proton VPN service, which is a free service. And on the free service requires you to be able to connect to only three uh, servers worldwide, as opposed to 860. And uh, those three servers can be in different countries. Um, and so we'll connect to that, and we'll see which country we get connected to. Um, and the service as well, one caveat here I will mention is the free service for Proton VPN is not the high-speed 10 gigabit connection servers that uh, Proton makes available to non-free subscribers. So, um, is the test a little biased? Uh, maybe, but uh, the way I look at it, uh, I'm comparing two similar VPN platforms. I'm, con I'm comparing the free Proton VPN with the free WireGuard VPN. Now, like as I said. The only charge with the WireGuard service, um, and if you're not familiar with WireGuard, go check out my video in my article uh, as well uh, that I just pointed you to uh, on my blog. Uh, the only charge is a $5 charge per month associated with maintaining that WireGuard Linode server that I set up in Atlanta. And uh, if it wasn't for that, uh, then there would be no charge. It's still free. WireGuard is not a paid service. Uh, it is a VPN um, service that is set up in the kernel, in the Linux kernel. Uh, and uh, I talk about that in my article. I also talk about that in my video, so I won't go into it here. So let's get down to it here. Uh, let's go, first of all, let's go out to IP Chicken here, and you can see that here is the IP address of my wide area network. It's a public facing IP address assigned to me by my ISP, which is Spectrum uh, Internet. Please do not DDoS me here. 
because I'm revealing my WAN IP. Um, but anyway, this is the IP address given to me by my ISP Spectrum. And so I don't have any VPN service uh, invoked right now or set up, implemented. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to the speed test site, which is the speed of me. And I, I like this one because it can give you a history of your previous tests as well. But I'm going to run a test. I'm going to run it without any uh, VPN setup whatsoever. And so I'm going to go ahead and start that test and see what we get. Now my um, committed internet rate for Spectrum service is 200 megabits per second down, 11.5 megabits per second up. So we'll see what we get here. Uh, so all right, so I'm getting 240.75 megabits per second down, which is exceeding my committed internet uh, rate for my Spectrum service, which is very good. Uh, rarely ever have a problem with Spectrum. I really like it. And so let's see what we get for upload. So I'm, for upload, I get 12.08, which is actually greater. Remember I said 11.5 was the committed internet rate for upload speed. So I'm getting greater than that for uploads as well. Latency here is 24 milliseconds, which is a wonderful. Get, you couldn't really ask for better than that. The only way you can get better than that is if you're on a, a straight wired connection. Um, and you're, you're connected to your uh, local host, which is about three milliseconds. So uh, it's very good speed. There's the IP address, 7181-208-174. I am testing here on the Atlanta 2 test server. And as I showed you earlier, that 7181-208-174 is the same IP address I'm getting here on IP Chicken, which checks my current IP address. All right, so those are very good speeds that I got there. All right, so remember that, 240.75 and 12.08. All right, so let's uh, let's go back out here to um, my terminal. And in the terminal, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, implement my WireGuard uh, service. And I've got an alias set up in my Linux system here that all I have to do is type in uh, WG up okay and hit put in my sudo password and I'm connected you see how fast that connection was it was instantaneous if I go back out to IP chicken and look at the IP address after I uh, refresh the screen you can see that that is 74.207.233.107 that is the IP address of my Linode server in Atlanta. So it did change from my IP address provided to me by my ISP uh, Spectrum. And so that's hiding my IP address. Anybody who wants to track me uh, will not see that I'm in my hometown. They'll think that I'm Atlanta, in Atlanta, Georgia. And that's great. I could have chosen any other worldwide server that Linode has available to it, which is worldwide. I chose Atlanta because I wanted it to be close. And so I, if I just change that out at any time to another Linode, I can make that IP address different. All right, so let's take a look now at the speeds we get once we have implemented WireGuard. So let's go back out. Let's repeat the test. And hopefully we'll get the same server, Atlanta 2. I want to see what impact that uh, my WireGuard VPN has on my connection speeds here. I'm not expect, expecting or anticipating much of a change at all. There will be some degraded speed. And there we see it is uh, instead of 240, I think we now are down to 193.31 megabits per second. Very respectable. Um, I can live with that. And my upload speeds, I'm supposed to get 11.5, as I mentioned. And my committed internet rate, I had 12.08, uh, I believe. Um, without having WireGuard implemented. But with WireGuard implemented, it's 11.41. Uh, can live with that too, definitely. Uh, latency on the non-implemented uh, WireGuard was 24 milliseconds. It only increased my latency by 2 milliseconds. Can't beat that with a stick. There's the IP address, 74.207.233.107, which matches the IP address here on IP chicken okay all right so um, let me go back here to the speed of me 
And the test server was the identical test server, as you can see here, Atlanta 2. So we've got an unbiased test here, very unbiased test um, of the WireGuard implementation. All right, so let me go back to WireGuard. Let me bring it down. And to do that, I just do a WG down. And I'm down. All right, so if I go back to here and go back to the IP chicken and refresh the page, you can see that my IP address changed back to the WAN provided IP that Spectrum gives me, which is 71.81.208.174. Okay, so let's go back out to um, the uh, terminal here. I'm going to clear the screen and I'm going to log in as uh, root. Proton VPN requires me to do that to launch it. And uh, I'm going to uh, implement Proton VPN which is an open VPN uh, service instead of WireGuard. And to do that, I'm going to do Proton VPN con uh, C for connect. And I'm going to use the R switch to connect to a random uh, VPN server, which is one of three servers worldwide. Could be in the Netherlands, could be in uh, Florida, could be somewhere in the United States, in Florida perhaps, or some other country. Um, but here we go. I'm going to hit the enter key and it says connecting. It's connecting to a free US uh, server here in the United States via UDP, which is, uh, means it's going to be less degraded. It says I'm connected. All right, but you see how long that took. That took about 10 seconds or more to make that connection. Let's go back out to the uh, web here and let's see what IP address I'm showing now. If I click that, I'm um, I'm actually hitting a 209.58.142.159. Not sure what city that's in, uh, but it's a it's in the United States. I do know that. Uh, so it did change my IP. It did hide my IP, which is good. And now if I go to the uh, speed of me and run the speed test, I'm going to go ahead and repeat that speed test now that I have Proton VPN up and running. So let's run that and see what kind of speeds we get now. Uh, with uh, Proton VPN. This is an open VPN service. All right. So I do anticipate a degraded service here because open VPN typically does slow you down quite a bit. And it did. So it went from 240 down to 100 down to 17.67 uh, megabits per second. That's not something I can live with, although that's not a bad speed for a lot of people. And the upload speed too should be about around 11.5. It's not going to great, not going to reach that by any stretch, I'm afraid. Um, so let's see what it finally comes out to here. It's taking a while to do the uploads test. <laughs> and so with the upload test completing now, we're getting a 3.36 megabit per second upload. Can I live with that? No. Uh, it should be closer to 11.5. The latency went from 24 megabits or milliseconds, as you remember, from no implementation of any VPN up to 97 milliseconds, which is about four times, um, three to four times the latency that you get with no VPN implemented, much higher latency than you get with WireGuard implemented. Same test server, Atlanta 2, so that means that this should be a very, very, fairly unbiased, it's hard to say, uh, test there because I'm using the same test server in Atlanta and the 209.58.142.159 matches that that I get from IP Chicken. All right, so you can see here that Proton VPN, even though it is an extremely uh, good, cryptographically strong, secure VPN, as is WireGuard, uh, since it is open VPN for my free service. I'm not getting uh, near the quality in speed test results that I'm getting when I'm implementing WireGuard, and it is not connecting anywhere near as fast uh, as it does when I'm connecting to my WireGuard. WireGuard is instantaneous connection, instantaneous down. If I go down and, and bring this down, I'm going to do Proton VPN D, and you can see it takes a few seconds even to disconnect. Okay. So I, I really don't like the fact that it's taking 10 seconds or more to connect me. And then I, I selected a random server. I did not select one of my choice, one of the three that I have available. 
Now, I will say, to be fair to ProtonVPN, if I were on a paid plan and connecting to one of more than 800 servers worldwide in 50 countries, might I get better test results than this? Sure. I dare say it would be anywhere near, though, what WireGuard VPN gives me. But I might get better speeds than what I got for the free because they're not dedicated 10 gigabit per second uh, servers, and Proton uh, tells you that, Proton VPN. So anyway, so this has been a, a video of comparing Proton VPN to WireGuard VPN. My VPN of choice, of course, is WireGuard that I set up. So go ahead and check out the video that I did uh, earlier on WireGuard implementation uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, if you like this particular video, if you thought it was helpful to you, go ahead and hit that uh, like button, thumb up. And if you haven't subscribed to me, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And uh, you'll get educational quality videos that I provide on a somewhat weekly basis. And so this has been Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.